Hello my YouTube friend, this is now Mechanic Kid and today I'm working on a 2007 Saturn View and what we're going to be doing today we are going to be doing a compression test I want to thank all my subscribers and my friends that helped me out on this one you heard the sound, I did a video, a small short video of the sound this car is making and a lot of you suggested for me to do a compression test and that's what we're going to do today so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the relay for the fuel pump and also our fuse. And this is where our fuse and relay is located. And it has a tab here and all you have to do is just press it in and then bring it up. And the good thing about this one is that it has, it, if you didn't know where it was at, it has the location. You have fuel pump there, the relay, and in the bottom you have the fuel pump. So this is your relay right here, this one, and all you have to do is just remove it up, and this one right here is your fuse. This one, I'm going to remove both of them. Now that we remove the relay and the fuse, all we have to do is just cycle the key at least for like three to four seconds and then we're going to start with this compression test. Now that we cycle the key what we're going to do is now start removing some parts so we can get to the spot plug and put our compression tester. So we have to move this here first. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the screw that's here and it's a fill-up. Excuse me, it's a flathead. And all you do is loosen it up. Once you loosen it up, you can take it out. Then over here, you have the sensor here. So we have the sensor here. And the first thing we have to do is just remove it and it has a tap in the bottom and all you have to do is just press it and pull it now you have this breather hole here and all you have to do is just take this disconnect it and pull the holes out now that you've done that you have a screw under here right in the bottom here and you have this tap here So you have this tap here, so we're going to remove this tap up, down. Then you have this black thing here, and all you have to do is just press it down, and it comes off. Then you have a screw here, just like the same one that you pulled out over there, and you got to loosen that one up also. Just go in there and put your screwdriver and loosen it up. I'll show you how it is, how it looks. And once it's all that done, you can remove it. And this is the screw I was talking about right here. So now we got access to our spot plugs. So we have to remove this cover first. And I'm using a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, once you remove that, we have to remove this wire harness out of here. And all you're going to do is just use your screwdriver, put it here, press it up, and then the wire harness is out. Now what we're going to do is remove this up. And what we're going to do is start removing all the spot plugs. In order to do the compression test, we have to remove all the spot plugs. And I'm using this long extension with my ratchet with a 5.8 spot plug socket. 
Now what we're gonna do is remove the spot plugs. We have to remove all the spot plugs in order to do a compression test. I'm probably gonna have to mute this part because there's somebody here in the car playing their music so loud. And when I was taking off the, the cover, the air breather and all that, I noticed that the music was playing loud. So I'm probably gonna have to mute that or use part of another video when I was doing the spot plugs on this car. Sorry about that, but let's just get on, continue doing this. So let's remove the spot plugs one at a time. Like I said, I'm using a 5.8. And all you wanna do is just go in there, put it in, and just start <clears throat> removing it. And it goes one, you loosen them first. And then two, three, and four. I'm gonna use my impact gun right quick to remove one. There goes one. Smell like gasoline. Whoa. Gonna remove the other one. Yeah, these spot plugs are wet. It smell like gasoline in there. So I'm gonna remove the rest of them and I'll be right back. Now we're gonna use the compressing gauge. And if you didn't know, this is cylinder number one, number two, number three, and number four. We're gonna start with number one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the gauge. Make sure you get the proper size that belongs in here. And all you have to do is just put it right in there and just spin it. Now, make sure it's nice and tight. And you want to record all the reading from each one. So make sure this is low all the way to zero. And let's see if I can find a nice spot right here. Hopefully right here a hole. Okay, so this is cylinder number one. So let's get this cranking. Well, this thing didn't move at all. It's right at zero. Let me make sure this thing is nice and tight. All right, let's try again cylinder one. It did not move at all. That's not good at all. Well, I think we got a problem here. Let's do number two and let's see what happens. All right, so we got number two ready. All right, so that's number two. That's not good at all. No compression at all. No compression at all. That's not good. 
It's nice and tight in there. What I'm going to do is, for the other cylinders, I'm going to go get another compression test, just in case, a compression gauge, just in case if this one is defective. So I went and got me a different gauge. So let's see, so we don't have compression on one, two, and now we're going to do number three. And we're going to do the same thing. We'll take the compression tester and just put it. So here we go, cylinder number three. This one also have no compression. Can it be possible that there's no compression on all three of them? I don't know, because it's nice and tight. I just pulled it and it went down just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect it to number four to see if we have compression. Can it be possible that all four of them have no compression? If all four of them have no compression, I don't know the answer to this one. I'm gonna probably need your help again on this. So I'm gonna put the gauge on number four. Be right back. All right, here goes number four. And let's see, this one has compression. Number one, number two, and number three don't have no compression. And let's see, number four has compression. No compression either. I have never seen this before when all four cylinders have no compression. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of um, oil inside one of the cylinder to see if this, if we get any compression. Let me use cylinder number four. I'm gonna remove it. Then I'm gonna put some oil and put it back and let's see. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some oil on cylinder number four. I want to put enough oil to see the compression changes. And put a little more because I miss a little bit. I'm gonna put the compression tester and I'll be right back. So here we go, cylinder number four has oil on it. We call this the wet test and we're gonna check it out. I'm hoping that it moves a little bit at least. So it did move to about 32 PSI. Yep, it moved to 32. So it still didn't reach, so we do have a problem. I'm gonna do one more wet test and we're gonna go from there. So we are number two now. We put some oil in the cylinder and make sure that when you're gonna do the next one, you press this button and you clear it. So now let's see if this gauge move. So here we go. We are in cylinder number two. I put some oil on it and make sure when you go to the next cylinder that you press this button to clear it out. So let's see 
if this gauge move this time. So this one did move below 30. So I'm not even gonna do the other cylinders because we already know that we have an engine problem in this car. It can be the belt, it could be um, the, the, the head gasket, it could be something. Whatever you think it is, leave me a comment below. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna close up this video, but I'm gonna remove this for my next video without explaining it, just to see what's going on inside. So once again, this is Non Mechanic. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below or contact me on Non Mechanic 101 at yahoo.com. That is Non Mechanic 101 at yahoo.com. And remember, if Non Mechanic can do it, you can do it. Later.